the end of the semester is always very stressful. Um, I know this is much easier said than done, but as much as you guys can um, use like stress relieving techniques before you take your quizzes and exams, that will help you a lot. So if you don't have any good um, stress relieving techniques, look some up. Um, some really good ones and easy ones that you can do while you're taking your tests um, is like power poses. If you don't know what those are, you can look some up and I would say look up pictures or videos of them uh, and then choose your favorite one. And I don't care if you get up and, and do power poses while you're taking your exam. It might flag you, but it, I'm not gonna mark you off for that. Um, unless you like uh, dance around the room because I don't know like if you have something hidden somewhere that I couldn't see in your room scan but if you need to dance around just do that before the room scan <laughs> and um, but it's also really good to like go take a walk right before like do something active like do some jumping jacks um, anything that's like quick and can reduce your cortisol a little bit and exercise will help do that. Um, naked yoga would help if it wasn't proctored. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, don't do that on the <laughs> proctored exam. <laughs> do, you can do that before the proctored part though. Um, yeah, yoga would be a really good way to reduce your cortisol. Um, anything that will make you laugh, like even, <laughs> yeah, damn Proctorio, I know, it ruins everybody's fun. Um, although it has been pretty entertaining watching some of the, the Proctorio videos. <laughs> um, uh, even if you like fake laugh, it does something to your brain to help uh, relieve some stress. So you can try some of those things. And this is for all of your classes, not just for this one, but I know this one seems to stress people out more so than other classes. So, um, and if you guys need more stress relieving techniques and you're not finding any uh, searching online, you are welcome to email me and I can help you think of some more. All of my laughing is fake. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. It's like a, a laugh slash cry at this point in the semester. Okay, um, what questions do you guys have for me? Have you guys started activity eight? I know some of you have, but. Some people have already finished activity eight. Way ahead of the game. Good job. That doesn't mean that those of you who have not finished it should feel badly. What is eight, the heart? No, eight is spinal nerves. Uh, so it's the spinal cord and nerves. Um, so last week was the brain and cranial nerves. Now we're doing spinal cord and those nerves. Um, it's super interesting. It will be a little bit easier than last week. Um, actually, it's quite a bit easier. Oh, you think eight is easier than seven? Eight is easier than seven, yeah. So hopefully it won't take you as long, but don't use that to not study as, um, as early on in the week as you usually do. Just use that to be able to get ahead because next week, does it just get easier from here on out? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> Sorry, Lindsay. Um, so, Next week is going to be uh, the combined two activities, but activity nine is really small. 
So it's really just like a normal size activity altogether. There are a lot of, um, of blood vessels that you have to know, but that's a lot easier because you don't have to know any like significance or anything. You just have to know how to identify them. So that makes it a little bit easier. Plus blood vessels are, are a lot easier in the fact that many of them are just named for the regions that they're in or like the bones that they're over. Um, so that does make it easier for that. Seven wasn't bad. The muscle attachment and movements was just the death of me. Yeah. 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 It probably, I seriously doubt if, um, if you guys didn't have a difficult time with activity seven, um, you won't think anything past this point will be as hard as muscles. The only activity that people find as difficult as the muscles is the, uh, the one that you just did activity seven about the brain and cranial nerves. Um, and then, um, try to plan ahead. Um, first of all, oh man, I didn't. So last week was a little bit, uh, crazy for me as far as all of the things I had to do for, um, for work. Um, so I was not able to get out the schedule as far as what days you can get the most points for your last exam by taking it early. Um, so let me, I'm going to pause this. I'm on um, activity nine mm -hmm. and then doing some of the, um, the quizzes, like it says, um, like the coronary sulcus, but in the answer, it says coronary sinus. So do you know what the difference is between, because those are two different structures that you need to know. Okay. So with, this is a very I didn't common, even see what? Coronary sinus. I didn't even see coronary sinus on the list. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a, a very common question and a common mistake. Even when students understand the difference between the two, they get those two mixed up. Um, so do you guys remember? So tell me the general definition of what a sinus is. Like an open space? Yeah, a space. Um, so like your paranasal sinuses are those spaces that hold air and they like warm the air. Um, you have one, the frontal one, maxillary, all those that we learned. Um, and those will come up again, I think for activity 11. So don't forget those. Uh, but then uh, sinuses are just spaces. So there's this sinus in the heart that, and you learned last week with the brain for activity seven about the dural venous sinuses, remember? So the reason that they're called dural venous sinuses is because they are included, so they are within the dura mater, um, which is the dura part, and then venous because they are, the blood is returning back to the heart and veins always bring blood back to the heart. Arteries always take blood away from the heart. So arteries, um, well, never mind. I won't get into that right now. But um, and it's called venous be uh, because of the return blood flow, and then a sinus because there are no valves. So veins properly are, they have valves in them. So you don't get a backtrack of blood so that the blood doesn't go the wrong way, you know? Um, but a sinus doesn't have valves and that's why it's just a space because okay. there's not, it just goes the correct way due to the pressure that's in, um, 
in those vessels. Um, and it's the same thing with this sinus. This part of the sinus, you can see that it's bigger than the other veins on the heart. Um, and in that portion of it, and it's on the posterior part of the heart, um, right at the like base of the heart on the posterior side, there's that um, vein, but because it doesn't have valves, you call it a sinus. So, and it, it's on the heart specifically, so it's coronary sinus. Okay. Um, and the way that I remember that one is all of the other veins on the heart that you have to know are cardiac, right? So the great cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein, um, and small cardiac vein. And then that one is the, the one that's different because it's not a proper vein. So you switch it to the coronary sinus. And then somebody tell me what a sulcus is, which- Kind of like the groove. Yeah, it's a groove. Like in the brain, you had the sulcus and the gyrus, right? The gyrus was the, the um, bump, like the actual brain matter. And then the sulcus was the space in between each of the gyri. Um, yeah, groove and hill, yeah. Um, so that is also the same thing on the heart. And in this case, the reason that it's so confusing is that um, that coronary sulcus is where that coronary sinus sits. So the coronary sulcus houses the coronary sinus. Okay. There are other um, sulci, sulci, how, however you want to pronounce that um, plural form of sulcus. Um, I usually say sulci. Um, but you don't need to know those ones. Um, but just so you know, every blood vessel has, on the heart, has a sulcus but we're just making you know this main one because it's a, a common landmark that they use in clinical settings. Okay. What other questions do you guys have? I had a question, um, if you, I mean, if someone went to the like on campus lab last week, did like, were you guys still doing like the sheep's brain dissection or not? I don't know. You would have to contact the instructor for whichever, um, whichever, open lab you're going to. Does it list who does them when you go to sign up? You don't know? I think it does. I'm pretty okay. sure. Um, and just so you guys know, there is a, like in this um, slccanatomy.com, you can go into um, I think it's under resources and then there's an instructor contact. If you go there, there's a list of all of the instructors and each name is a link that you can click on their name and it will pop up with their email address. Um, and you can email them. Um, so you would have to ask, cause I know some instructors do like to do that, like the dissections at the open labs, and some of them don't. Like, but the thing is that um, if they have the like sheep brains there for you to dissect and you ask, nobody's going to say, no, you can't do that. Like no matter when you go in to do it, if we have the materials, they'll let you do that if you ask. 
um, just always make sure to remember to bring gloves whenever you go into the in-person open labs. We just probed brains and a barf bag. <laughs> It's really cool to be able to see and hold like actual human brains, I think. But I don't get grossed out about very much. <laughs> what other questions do you guys have? Uh, could you maybe pull up some photos of the axillary muscle, uh, axillary nerve, sorry, and the musculocutaneous uh, nerve, because there are some pictures that it's very clear what it is, especially with the musculocutaneous, but some, it's just like, it could be either because it looks like it's just going straight into the armpit. Um, but some, the musculocutaneous is like long and it's branched so you can tell where it's going, but others it's not. So I, get, I keep getting those mixed up. Yes. Okay, give me just a moment. I'm gonna pause this recording. Okay, so the nice thing is that on most of the pictures that you'll see in the brachial plexus, um, they will have the M uh, pulled out with a probe for you. Um, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, the M is um, these three nerves right here that you need to know, three of the five nerves that you need to know in the brachial plexus, um, that if you look, it makes the shape of an M right here. Do you see that? It's, I mean, from this angle, it looks like a really weird M, but um, if you saw from the correct angle, like how this comes together right here, you would also see that over on this side. The tricky thing about these um, nerves is that there are, so this is the normal, the most um, common uh, way for the nerves to branch off, but not all humans are made the same, right? We're all a little bit different. Um, and that's inside and out. So there are some where like the uh, musculocutaneous nerve, rather than coming down right here and into this uh, coracobrachialis, um, it might be coming a little bit off like right here instead. Um, or branching up like from a little bit more proximally. Um, so you'll want to watch out for that. But the easiest thing is to find the three parts of the M when they are intact. And so you know, okay, there's those three are all connected. So they're on the same like depth level in the body. Um, and so this most lateral one of the M, the one that goes usually the normal, um, connection is it comes out of this cord up here, and then it comes straight into the coracobrachialis and guess which, um, guess one of the muscles that this nerve innervates, if it's going straight to this muscle, probably also innervating that muscle, right? Um, and then this middle part, the one that goes right down the middle of the M is the median nerve. And then this most medial one is the uh, ulnar nerve. 
And that's the one that is right in between the, you can actually feel it on yourself and you can like make it kind of zing. So it like kind of sends like a tingle up your arm if you get it just right. But you can feel it if you, um, if you go right in between the olecranon process and the medial um, epicondyle, you can feel that really deep um, groove right there and the nerve. And there's also some blood vessels that run right through there. But when you hit your funny bone, that's actually, you're just hitting your ulnar nerve because it's very exposed right there. And so when you hit your, um, like right in that groove where your nerve is, it sends like this shooting, like pain up your arm. And then from that M, then deep to that, always deep to these three, you will find the other two in this region that you need to know, which is the radial nerve that has the bigger radius and then the axillary nerve, which you actually cannot see in this picture, um, but it would be, it comes, um, it comes from the same cord. So uh, have you guys started talking about nerves in your lecture classes yet? Yeah. Some of you have, some of you haven't. Okay. Um, so there are coming off of the spinal cord, there are the nerves that like branch and come together in different ways. And the way that you can remember the order of how they come off of the spinal cord is a, there's a mnemonic. The one that I learned is real Texans drink cold beer. And that's for roots, real is for roots. Texans is for trunks. Um, drink is for divisions. Cold is for cords. Beer is for branches. So in this class, we're teaching you the branches. So that's the very end part of the nerves, um, how they come off of the spinal cord. Um, so when I say cords, that's the, the portion right before the branches um, where these branches split off from each other. Um, and the cords have their, all their own names. Um, the divisions have all their own names, all that, but you are only learning these branches. Um, so both the radial nerve and the axillary nerve, and you would see that it's really thin um, even more thin, usually more thin than the musculocutaneous nerve. Um, and it's just a little one that's coming from the same cord as the radial nerve. And, but it goes like straight over into the armpit, but it's deeper inside. So let me show you a picture of the axillary nerve. Hmm. I wonder if they have this. Okay. Oh, wait. That's not the one that I wanted. Oh, down here. Okay. So this is one of those weird. Um... Hold on, let me. That's the one that's kind of weirding me out because it's long and it's branched and it's kind of obviously different than the radial nerve. Um, but then if you see lateral to it there are two other nerves that are branched and like those look like they could be musculocutaneous and then the one more lateral could be axillary so like that little 
bunch of spaghetti is just like really throwing me. Yes. So that is where you want to remember that the ulnar nerve, median nerve, and musculocutaneous nerve are all superficial to radial and axillary. So because you can see these two deep to these nerves, and definitely like with this uh, probe here, right in the middle of these more superficial nerves and these nerves that are deeper, you can see the different depths of those. So when you see them deeper and only two of them, like in more of a V shape, that's going to be radial and um, axillary. And these three up here, and yes, this is weird because usually this musculocutaneous nerve would be coming um, like in a normal variation. Um, uh, it would be coming up more proximally from this cord up here, but this one is coming out from the median nerve instead which is just a, a variation that um, I know it makes it more confusing and annoying, but that's um, hopefully you will, this will help you understand that in the clinical setting, you're going to learn in your classes, okay, here is the quote unquote normal anatomy. And then you're gonna start seeing patients and realize, oh, well, there's a lot of variations to this and depending on the person's body type and depending on the person's height or weight or whatever, it's like, it's very different. And so this is kind of the same type of thing um, where yes, usually it would be coming from here, but it's, it's going right to, and this is where, when you look at the muscles, that each of these nerves innervate, that is also going to help you use um, deductive reasoning and say, oh, well, I know that this nerve innervates this muscle, so it has to be this nerve, right? So using those, uh, like that information as you're studying and as you're trying to identify these. Um, so when you come to a confusing picture like this, it's, um, it, is a little bit easier to figure it out. Does that make sense? Is that does that help? Yeah, a little bit. There's one other picture um, that drives me crazy. Uh, it's listed as the axillary nerve. Um, I could show show you if I share my screen, but okay. Let me show another. So this one right here is a really good picture of. Um, and it has this like really annoying neon yellow color <laughs> that's highlighting so you can see more of the um, musculocutaneous nerve and how far down it goes because most of the time you only see this little part right here, but you can see that that nice little M right here. So you can see that musculocutaneous nerve right there, and then the median nerve right there, and the ulnar nerve right there. And then deep, if anything was highlighted deep to that, you would know it was either the radial nerve or axillary nerve. I would not ask you either of those on here because it is not clear enough. Um, but do you have the picture up? already? Yeah, I do. Okay, so let me um, stop sharing my screen. And you can go ahead and share yours. All right, do you see that? So it's showing the axillary nerve right there. Does that mean this is the musculocutaneous and then this is radial? Um, because I mean, it, I guess it's a little bit deep to this one now that I look at it. Um, but they, 
I don't know. Yeah. So this is, um, it is difficult not seeing this in person because, and, uh, but do you see how, yes, the musculocutaneous is right here and it's kind of getting like squished underneath the probe. Yeah. And then this one, they had to dig down deep to lift it up. And you can see that bend in it where it's coming up out at you more. And that tells you that that is like unnatural a uh, unnatural level where it is right because it's not just laying flat and it's not just um like the the probe isn't just set under it it's actually like pulling it up so you can see it a little bit better um but yes you can see that much bigger radial nerve that is coming under this median nerve right there that's in the middle so that's deep. Yep, right there. That's the radial nerve. And then this one is the axillary nerve because it's way up there in the armpit and it's deep. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Thanks. Uh, does anybody else have any questions about any of those or need me to clarify anything? more or again okay um let me look through uh if anybody has any questions while i'm looking for some pictures um feel free to go ahead and ask but i'm gonna look for some pictures of a couple other nerves that I know students get mixed up. So give me just a second while I do that. Uh -huh. Can you also look over like the common fibular nerve and then where it goes, differentiates branches to the deep and the superficial? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, don't let me forget your question. Who asked that? Okay. Um, let me share this. This is something that is usually pretty confusing for students, this area in here. Um, okay, so just so you can orient yourselves, here's the little shaded box that shows you the region that we're, uh, where we are in the body. So you can see that, um, so here's the uh, descending abdominal aorta. It goes all the way down to like the lumbar spine before it splits. Did you know your aorta goes down that low? starts way up here and then goes all the way through your whole abdomen and then it splits here um, that is stuff that you'll learn um, next week but right here is psoas major okay and then right here is iliacus okay right here is quadratus lumborum so you can kind of see some of you are, are I'm giving some of you PTSD from um, learning muscles, sorry. But um, this psoas major is going to be your landmark for these nerves. Um, you see this one that is, so here is the inguinal ligament, yes? When you are, um inside the uh the body before going through this inguinal ligament 
you're going to see a nerve on this side. And then you'll also see another one here. You can actually see it pretty well right here on this side. Okay, this one, and you can see it, this little string right here, I think is it. From this view, it's a little bit hard to um, determine for sure if that's it. But this one over here is more lateral than this one here. Does everybody agree with that? Hopefully, yes. Um, this one that is lateral and right next to the psoas major is the femoral nerve. And then once you pass through this inguinal ligament, it, you're gonna see it branch. And you can actually see that down here after the inguinal ligament, you're gonna see a bunch of branching. All of these um, different branches coming off of the main branch have their own names. You don't need to know any of those. You just need to know all of this collectively is femoral nerve, but you will need to be able to identify it from this outside part once it passes um, underneath the inguinal ligament and inside when it's right up next to psoas major. And then the one that is more medial is the obturator nerve, which makes sense, right? Because the obturator nerve is going to go through what foramen? It's in the name. <laughs> Yes, the obturator foramen. Do you guys remember that from activity four? Obturator foramen on the that big huge hole in the os coxa. Um, so that's going to go through there. And then you can also see that one medially. Um, the best this one doesn't show it. Let me see if there's a, a picture. Okay, um, before I move on, let me just show you this. So this has uh, the psoas major dissected off, but you can still see both nerves and you can actually see them a lot more clearly. So this one that's highlighted is the one that is um, more superficial and it's more lateral. And then you see this more stringy thin one that goes down deeper and it's more medial. That's the obturator nerve. And this one that's highlighted is the femoral nerve. Okay, so even when you don't have that um, psoas major there, you can still figure that out from uh, just seeing those two nerves. Okay, right here. Um, so this one, you can see it down here where it's being um, pulled out on from the probe, but you can also see it right here. There's this little like bright white that you can see is the same color as these other nerves. The way that I remember where to find it is it goes, it sits right in between the um, adductor uh, longus and brevis. Or if it's easier for you, it like peaks out from pectineus, okay? So it peaks out in the little window right in between pectineus and adductor longus. And then, so it goes underneath pectineus and adductor longus and on top of adductor brevis, okay? And that's going to, I mean, that one is medial and going right through all those adductor muscles. So guess what muscles 
um, are innervated by that nerve. You don't have to answer. I'm just trying to get you to, to think logically about um, innervation for these. Okay, now let me find... some pictures of the common fibular Okay. So leading to what, um, what we're going to be talking about here, um, from the uh, sacral plexus, you have um, the sciatic nerve. Um, and just an FYI, some teachers, some lecture teachers really like to ask you, um, what does this nerve innervate? Asking about the sciatic nerve. Does anyone know the answer to that? Have you guys started talking about that stuff? Doesn't it innervate nothing, but it branches into two things that innervate stuff? That's exactly correct. So sciatic nerve does not innervate anything because it doesn't go directly into anything. It's just a combination of two nerves wrapped around in the same uh, connective tissue. Um, and remember uh, another thing that you're gonna have to learn. Do you guys remember with, your, with the muscles around each, um, you had the connective tissues uh, like around each, um, fiber around each fascicle and around each muscle. Do you guys remember what those were called? Uh, endomycium, perimycium, and epimycium. Yes, in that order, deep to superficial. So endo meaning inside. So that's usually the easiest one for people to remember. If you can remember endo, um, endomycium, that's the most inner covering, inner layer of connective tissue. Um, and that's around each fiber. And then you have um, a bunch of those fibers with the um, endomycium making up a fascicle. And around the fascicle is the perimycium. And then a bunch of those together makes up a an entire muscle and around the muscle is the connective tissue called the um, epimycium. Um, it's the same thing with nerves, except um, instead of a, a muscle cell or muscle fiber, you're talking about an axon. So each little axon has its own little covering, but instead of endomycium, because mycium is telling you like myo for muscles, it's nurium because we're talking about nerves and it's the same order. And it's also called a fascicle when you have a bunch of axons together in a bundle, that's a, um, a fascicle. And then a bunch of fascicles together equals a nerve. And then around each nerve is the um, epineurium. Uh, so this, these two nerves are within the same epineurium. And then down here, they split off because they're traveling to the same place here, which is why they can be in the same connective tissue covering. But then they have to split off and go their own, um, their own direction. And you can see, <clears throat> So if you notice up here, over here is lateral, over here is medial. So which bone in your, so think in the leg down here, not in the thigh, cause you only have one bone up here, right? Um, down here, which bone is lateral? 
fibula. Yes, the fibula is the little one and it's lateral. So this one that is on the lateral side is going to be the common fibular nerve. This one on the other side, never, uh, you don't have any branches that you need to know after this. It's just tibial nerve all the way down. Um, and if any of you used the, um, the Tom Dick Nervous Harry to remember those muscles back there in the leg, um, the nervous part is the, was the tibial nerve. Um, and so you can see that way down here and all the way up here. So then, let's see. So now this is on the other leg. So make sure you orient yourself lateral, medial. So which nerve is this going to be that the arrow is on? Tibial. Tibial nerve, because that is going more medial. That's the more medial part of the branch than this one. So this one is going to be what? Common fibular. Common fibular, yes. What's that one? Is that the deep one? Deep. What side of the leg are we on Tibial. from this view? Huh? Tibial. This is the medial part. So right here is the medial malleolus. There's the tibia right there. That's the tibial nerve. It goes all the way down through here. So remember the um, Tom, Dick, nervous, Harry. This is that nervous part. And it actually goes, it would go under this muscle, the um, flexor hallucis longus. And then it would come right in between flexor digitorum longus and flexor hallucis longus, right? It usually sits right in there, but because it's, it's easier to see right here, uh, that's where they have it highlighted. There's a common fibular. Okay. These ones are after the common fibular splits. Whenever you see the word common, that tells you that it's going to split into two other ones. So common fibular is going to split into deep fibular and superficial fibular. Um, whenever you see a, that the probe is lifting up the nerve from down deep and you can see that it's going down farther, that is going to be the deep fibular nerve. The superficial fibular nerve sits right on top and it's really thin. And delicate. So this is showing it right here. And it usually, it's really common for it to split into this V like this. There's a piece of one right there coming out. When I say it lays really delicately right on top, I'm talking about on the uh, dorsum of the foot. 
So it comes out from deep in between um, the fibularis muscles. Let me see right there. You don't need anything propping it up to show any part of it once it peeks out from those lateral muscles right there. And then it just, it comes around a little bit medial. So it lays right on top of that um, first metatarsal. And then it like the other portion of it kind of lays on the second metatarsal. Does anybody have any questions about that? Any of those? This one is in at all. It's just good. Oh man, are you kidding me? That's the only picture that they have of pedundal nerve apparently that's the best nerve do you guys know what that one does do you guys know what pedendal means i don't know what it means but i know what it innervates uh, pedendal means pertaining to shameful. So the pedendum is your shameful area. <laughs> so remember this is, hi. Um, this is uh, way back in the day by priests. So um, that was a shameful area. Um, this is the nerve that innervates your junk and uh it's so your external genitalia and your urogenital diaphragm that you'll learn in activity 12 um that is the thin strip of muscle that uh the skeletal muscle that helps you not pee yourself and it also um, innervates the external anal sphincter. So it innervates your junk and helps you not pee and poop yourself in public. So definitely a good nerve. Um, you can also see that from the anterior view just so you know there's actually a really a really good dissection somebody super awesome had to have done the dissection um the you can take out the bladder on the male cadaver over at redwood campus and um and you can see the pedendal nerve down inside the pelvic cavity and it has a little um, tag, like a string around it. It used to, hopefully it's still there. If anybody goes into the open labs and sees those. Um, okay. We've got a couple more minutes left. Do you have any other questions about anything? Do you guys um, understand how to tell the difference between, like on the spinal cord, there's the anterior median fissure and posterior median sulcus? So, somebody tell me something. Yeah, Upside what? down butterfly wings to me. What's that? It looks like the the horns look like upside down butter wings. So like the thin ones are posterior and then the big thick ones are anterior. So that's how I orient myself. Yes. 
in most pictures that you will be able to use that. There are some pictures that it makes it a little bit more difficult, like those um, anterior and the posterior gray horns um, are a little bit closer in size to each other. Um, but, and that also depends like how, um, how like superior or inferior you are in the spinal cord, uh, the size difference. But um, as far as the fissures, so let me, let me see. Let me find a picture. Okay, so this one is a lot easier because you can see the spinous process. So you know that that is posterior and you can see the body. So you know that that is the anterior portion. Um, so you know when you're looking at the spinal cord, this side is anterior, this side is posterior. So this is what um, Camellia, wait, did I say your name right? Okay. <laughs> Um, was just talking about. So do you see how these posterior gray horns are more thin and they come out more? And then the anterior ones are like more blunt and rounded and it doesn't jut out as, as far. Um, and then these lateral ones are kind of similar to the anterior ones, but they come out laterally. Um, but you have the uh, anterior, so this um, is a fissure right here, and this is a sulcus. So looking at those and also thinking back to other structures that you needed to know fissure as opposed to sulcus, like in activity seven, what did you need to know that was called a fissure in activity seven? Longitudinal fissure. The longitudinal fissure that separates the hemispheres. So is that bigger or smaller than the uh, than a sulcus? Bigger, right? Because the sulcus, the sulci are like the little divots in between the gyri in your brain. Um, so the same thing with fissure and sulcus here. And then both of them are directly right in the middle of the um, spinal cord. So that's why median is in the name. And then you just have to say the first word, uh, whether it's the anterior or posterior. So there is a, um, a mnemonic that helps you remember because um, a lot of students like to say, anterior median sulcus or posterior median fissure. It's hard for me to say it wrong. Um, so AMF, like the drink AMF, adios mother fissure. Um, and then PMS, like premenstrual syndrome. Or another one that people like is all men fear PMS. So AMF, PMS. Okay, so you remember which one is a fissure and which one is a sulcus. Then you just have to determine, okay, is this anterior or posterior? Um, any other quick questions before we end? I don't have a question, but I have something to share with you guys, if that's okay. Yeah. I apologize to whoever else was um, in my lecture class. I shared it yesterday, but um, March is Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month. Um, 
And tomorrow, the 25th, is CP Awareness Day. Um, so you're supposed to wear green in support. My daughter has cerebral palsy, and so that's why it's important to me. So um, if you if you could, um, that would be great. Just me knowing that you guys are my friends and you can support. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so just wear green tomorrow and uh, learn stuff about cerebral palsy. Awesome. So tomorrow, the 25th. Okay, so I said that for the benefit of anyone who watches this tomorrow instead. Um, so yes, thank you for sharing. Everybody remember that for tomorrow. Anything else from anybody? Um, just one dumb question. When do you think you'll send out the announcement about dates? I'm trying to uh, like schedule my... <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I was really hoping to do that last week. Um, uh, sorry, I just uh, got distracted from a text message. Um, but I, I had way too many things going on and come up at the last minute. So I apologize. Um, I should be able to get that sent out. I'm really hoping tonight, but if not tonight, then tomorrow during the day. I know you guys are, are trying to plan things out and I want to get that to you as soon as possible. Um, it's going to, so the, the earliest or the the time that you would need to take it to get the most points is a week or earlier. And then it'll go down from there every like couple days, okay? Um, but I will have the exact dates and points out. Um, I'm hoping by the end of today. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Anybody else? Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. All right, I will see you guys next week. Email me or put in the hallway if you guys have any questions, okay? Thank you, see ya. See ya.